Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for checking us out on our Sunday night devotion. Our goal at this time is just to turn our hearts and our minds to the scriptures and really just come to terms with how much God loves us and hopefully that increases our love and response for God. So we hope this moment is a blessing to heart, mind, soul, our, our entire person. This morning we started to look at our sermon series uh, it's just called Stories in Luke. So we're going to be walking through and highlighting some of the big moments in Luke's gospel. Today, specifically, we talked about the ministry and the message of John the Baptist. And I'd like to look at that a little more tonight and, and fill in some of the gaps. There was a statement that John the Baptist made. We're going to cover it again, but I'm just going to sum it up right now. And he said, hey, Repentance leads to bearing fruit or bear fruit by keeping in repentance. And so in John's mind and hopefully in our mind, repentance and transformation in becoming like Jesus just to always synonyms. Now, another way of looking at repentance and fruit is to look at faith and repentance. And I just love to interchange these terms so that when we think about our daily existence as Christians, we think about faith, which is just believe in God, and then repenting because we understand our sin. And we just kind of live and walk in this posture of, of belief and confession, belief and confession. So um, we mentioned that John's preaching as a prophet was very confrontational. And he was telling people they need to turn away from their sin and they need to return towards God. And actually in verse 7, he speaks to a crowd like this. I, I kept this one out because of the sake of time and John's just out of control. But this is John the Baptist. This is the way he addresses the crowds that are coming to hear his teaching. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, which... I don't even know how to make a contextual connection of what that means today, but it's not good. Um, but his question is, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? And really, what scholars think is happening here is John is looking to an, a ton of people. I mean, again, some gospel writers say that the entire countryside came out to be baptized by John. And so John leans in on the audience and he's like, hey, you, right, specifically you, Mike, Nate, like, why are you here, right? Are you here because your soul is really sensing rebellion and that you want to return to your heavenly father? Or are you here just to observe what's going on? Or are you here because your buddy came or your family came? Like, like what is in the depths of your heart? What is drawing you to this river? Now, I really think for us, like, why, we can ask ourselves a question tonight. Why are we here? Like, why are we tuned in? Why are we watching? Why are we looking at the word? What is the motivation in our heart that is driving us and drawing us to God, his presence, and his scriptures? So, I hope the answer is faith. I hope the answer is that God is doing a work in our soul and he is allowing us to supernaturally come alive. That's actually what faith is. Faith is the idea that we believe that God is who he says he is, that God's word is his word. That, that what we find in the scriptures is God's revelation of his heart and his will in the story of redemption played out in our lives. And based on our faith and based on what we understand about God, we respond to God. And that's what John was saying, again, in, in verse 8, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Believe what I'm telling you about the kingdom of God and respond rightfully. So tonight we want to celebrate. Faith leads us to repentance 
And repentance brings fruit out of our lives. Uh, faith leads us to repentance, and it releases and reveals the work of God inside of us. This is what happens when we just kind of understand this sequence of events. And my friends, faith, repentance, fruit. Faith, repentance, fruit. This becomes an everyday distinction mark of God's people. Faith simply is like, okay, God in the scriptures address, addresses me as having a sin condition. It's a nature. It's part of my makeup. It's the way I'm wired. It comes from Adam. I know sometimes it's difficult to believe our story can trace all the way back to that moment, but we definitely see sin everywhere we, everywhere we go, every time we step outside. So sin is not hard to believe in. Sometimes the nature of sin can cause question. But the Bible also says that if I take my sin to Jesus, he and he alone can deal with it. So it's like faith is a believing I'm sinful, but it's also believing that I can take it to Christ and his cross has already handled it. Faith allows us to believe the word of God like uh, 1 John 1, 9 and 10. This is so sweet. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. Number 10, hold on, here we go. If we claimed we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. So let's just be honest about who we are and bring our sin to Jesus. He's faithful and he's just. He forgives our sin and he cleanses us from all of our unrighteousness. So faith and repentance. Uh, many of us in the leadership of Great Exchange were introduced to a book over the last couple years, and it's called The Gospel-Centered Life. And in this really short and simple book, there were two charts that totally changed the way I personally have connected to Christianity. And I just want to draw our attention to chart number one. And this is simply called the cross chart. On this chart, we see that we're walking along in life. And then God comes into our story and he saves our soul. That moment on the chart that says conversion, that is when we come alive in Jesus Christ. It's different for each and every one of us. But if you're here and you're in Jesus, you have a conversion moment. And in that moment of conversion, we understand, okay, God is holy. He's not like us. He's creator. He's sustainer. He is everything. And then also, we understand that I am sinful. I'm broken. I'm rebellious. That's exactly what we've been talking about. And as the timeline continues, we hope that every day, we become more aware of God's holiness. You know, we do that by listening to worship. We do that by reading the scriptures. We do that by attending church. We do that by being in group. We do that by praying for people to experience God. Like, like when we're aware of God's holiness as we grow in Jesus Christ. But something else is happening at that same time. The more we're aware that God is holy, the more I'm aware that I am sinful. And I think that this is a part many Christians struggle with because we don't want to own our stuff. Some, somewhere along the lines, we've been told that God is going to save us and sanctify us completely, ultimately, like now. And, and Scripture seems to paint a different picture. I'm not saying we don't become more like God. We do. We bear fruit. But until the day we breathe our last breath, I am still going to need to repent and 
choose faith. I'm, I'm still going to need grace to come alive, and I'm still going to wrestle with sinfulness inside of me. So as God is more holy, I realize I'm more sinful, but what I really want to see is how the cross of Jesus Christ just gets enlarged. It's bigger and bigger and more beautiful and more bold and more breathtaking because we understand that we're still connected to our God because of our great Savior. And the bigger the cross gets, the more love we have for our God and our souls for him. On the next chart, we see something else that can happen. And unfortunately, this happens pretty often. We meet Jesus, and then we go on a journey and we're not exposed and we don't become aware of how holy God is, and we're not exposed and we're not aware of how broken we are. And the cross doesn't grow. right? The, the cross doesn't increase. It, 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 it kind of gets blah. It's like, ah, okay, like I, I've been there, I've been forgiven, I've had my sins covered. I've, no, we want something more spectacular than that. We want to live in awe of our great God. And so we call this shrinking the cross. And we shrink the cross when we do not grow in grace and in the knowledge of our incredible God and when we fail to grow in awareness of how frail and how broken and really the, the struggle of sin and rebellion that still resides in our old self. My, friend, my friends, faith and repentance eliminates that. If every day we decide to believe, if every day we look at the scriptures, if every day we turn our attention to God and say, God, you saved me, if every day we kind of examine our soul and, and I see some stuff that, okay, like I didn't consider sin 20 years ago. The only sin 20 years ago was like, don't rob people, don't get high, don't get drunk, like, you know, like just don't treat women like crap. Like it was, it, it was different than the sin that I struggle with today. Like I found my heart wicked critical lately, just critical. Why am I critical? I don't want people to be critical towards me. Why am I critical towards anybody else? That's not where I want to be. That's stuff I need to repent over. That's stuff I probably wouldn't even consider sin five years ago. But now it's on the radar, man, and I need to bring it to the cross of Jesus Christ. So God's call, uh, our call as God's children is faith and repentance. Faith and repentance for the rest of our lives. Let me leave you with some questions. Our groups aren't really in full gear with the holidays, but we'll be back um, and, and just ponder this over personally. Question number one, what pops when we read Luke 3, 1 to 21? There's a lot there. And I'm just curious, how is God speaking to your mind and your heart as you look at that passage of Scripture? Number two, have we ever been concerned about our motives regarding our faith? Like, have we asked hard questions? Have we ever wondered, like, Jesus, why are, why are we into you? What are, well, are we trying to get something? Are we trying to, you, I'm not def, uh, defining that question well. Number three, how do we see, actually, how does repentance reveal God's work inside of us? How does repentance reveal God's work inside of us? Question number four. What aspect of the cross graph do you agree with? What do you wrestle with? Do you think that we will sin less as we walk with Jesus? And if so, how does that idea impact what we were talking about? There's a lot there, but I think we should just kind of figure that stuff out. And number five, uh, this ties back into our sermon this morning. Can you hear God say, you are my son or you are my daughter. I love you and I am well pleased with you. And if so, how? That's our time. Thank you so much for tracking with us. I hope you have a really great evening. We will catch you soon. Bye for now.